It's the Roy Rogers Show. Happy trails to you. It's nice to meet again. Happy trails to you. Until the journey's end. Post Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal, brings you the Roy Rogers Show. Transcribed on the Double R Bar Ranch with Pat Brady and the Queen of the West, Day 11. Happy trails to you. Time to ride again. And here he is, in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. You know, being a cowboy, you need lots of energy. That's why Grape Nuts Flakes is the cereal I like for strength and energy. Just two minutes after you eat a big bowl full, that whole wheat energy starts going to work for you. Try Grape Nuts Flakes buckaroos. They're great. And now, seeing it's the night before Halloween, well, <clears throat> just listen. <laughs> Dale Evans, the proprietress of the Eureka Cafe in Mineral City, is known as a mighty good businesswoman. But this evening, she's concluding a rather unusual deal. There you are, sir. Two hundred and fifty dollars. Well, thank you right smart, ma'am, and a couple of hoop de doos <laughs> You've got such a pretty, honest face, I ain't even gonna bother to count the money. <laughs> well, thank you. Besides, I seen you count it. Now, here's your map. Gee, a map to a lost gold mine. You're sure there's no catch to this now? Little lady, if you don't find gold there, my name ain't Nugget Norman. Well, I'll need at least $2,000 in a few weeks, and... Well, you're sure I'm not depriving you of anything by buying this map? Ma'am, I'm just too old to pack into Boulder Canyon. Besides, I've had my fun in life. <laughs> you know, this map looks sort of hard to follow. Well, it's an old map. But you get to Boulder Canyon and keep your witch about you, little lady, and there's no telling what'll happen. Pat, did you ever hear of anything like it? <laughs> <laughs> I sure did, Roy. <laughs> what are we laughing at? Well, Dale's fallen for one of the oldest petty larceny tricks in the whole West. She bought a map to the Halloween gold mine. The Halloween gold mine? The one that whales? <laughs> oh, sister. <laughs> I fail to see what's so funny. No kidding, Dave. Haven't you ever heard the story of the Halloween mine in Boulder Canyon? No. Uh, tell her, Pat. I just haven't got the heart. Well, the way my pappy told it to me, there was a real slick young con man named Corky Lewis operating in these parts about 50 years ago. Pappy said he was a happy-go-lucky sort of a fella. He could sing and dance, crack jokes, play the fiddle. Why, everybody liked him. And they were sorry for it later, though, uh, because Carkey planted a few thousand dollars worth of gold nuggets in a cave somewhere in Boulder Canyon, told the people he'd made a big strike, then sold stock in the mine that wasn't a mine at all. I don't see what either of you are driving at. Well, Dale, ever since then, maps to this lost cache of nuggets have been turning up all over the West. And a story has sprung up that the darn cave they're supposed to be in makes a noise, a wailing noise. You know, I'd like to hear a wailing gold mine. Well, I don't care. I'm going to Boulder Canyon, and I trust that nice old man who sold me the map. Oh, what was his name, Dale? Why, why, oh, yes. He said if I didn't find gold there, his name wasn't Nugget Norman. Hmm. He said if you didn't find gold there, his name was... Do you think that that could be a misleading statement, Roy? Uh, I don't know about women, I declare. I just don't know about them. But if Dale insists on going to Boulder Canyon, then all three of us are going. Because as soon as I can prove to her that it's a fake, I want to go after the old man who sold her the map. <laughs> This campsite will work out fine. We'll have to go on foot when it comes daylight, though. Yep. 
little old Nellie Bell can't climb boulders like these. I can hardly wait. According to the map, the mine is a couple of miles further in. Well, that map doesn't make much sense. I, I hope we don't have to go through all the caves in this canyon. Must be 500 of them. Well, the map's clear to me. You know, if there was such a thing as a whaling gold mine, this canyon would be a fine place for it. You know, it's sort of a spooky place, ain't it? Gosh, isn't it, though? Those shadows the big boulders cast are just plain weird. They kind of give me the chills. Pat, throw a little more wood on the firewood. The lady's cold. Oh, sure, Roy. Maybe I could find some whaling wood and we could have a whaling campfire. <laughs> of all the silly things I have. Oh, wait a minute. Roy, what was that? Roy, I'm scared. Yeah, let's get out of here. Well, you're a couple of fine westerners. Don't even know a coyote when you hear one. Oh, it's a coyote. <laughs> Why, sure, it's a, it's a coyote. I, I knew it all the time. Oh, oh sure. Yeah. Uh, now, you'd better crawl into your sleeping bags and get some shut-eye. Bullet and I will stand the first watch. <laughs> Imagine Royal and Dale chasing off down that canyon, following that silly map and leaving me here. Sure doesn't seem to be anyone around to steal our equipment. Oh, me. Nellie Bell, if you could only talk. Well, I guess you can't. Well, as long as they're looking in caves, I guess I might as well go through the one we're camped outside of. Bullet, now you keep one eye open and call me if you need me. Oh, shucks, you're as bored as I am. Women can lead you on the darndest wild goose chases. I don't know why Roy's humoring Dale like this. Say, it's kind of dark in here. Oh, cows will have wings and bears will have tails When anyone finds a cave that wails Oh, boats will have wings Jeeps will have sails when anyone finds a cave that... Uh, oh, that darned old coyote again. <laughs> Gee, for a minute there, I thought... It... Oh, wait a minute. Coyotes don't live in caves, do they? Oh, oh, Roy. Oh, Dale. Oh, Nelly Bell. Well, this adventure's mighty exciting, hey, listeners? And here's something every bit as exciting. The new Roy Rogers King of the Cowboys pop-out trading cards offered you by Post Serials, free of extra cost. There are 36 different pictures in this wonderful series. Real-life pictures of Roy, Dale, Trigger, Bullet, and Pat in exciting action. And here's why these cards are so extra special. You see, the main part of each picture pops right out Easy as you please. You have lifelike two-dimensional figures that stand up by themselves. Great for decorating your room or club headquarters. And don't forget, you send no box tops, no money. These Roy Rogers cards are free of extra cost. At your grocers, just look for the trading card packages of these famous Post cereals. Crinkles, Raisin Bran, Grape Nuts Flakes, Bran Flakes, Sugar Crisp, and Post Toasties. Each package brings you one of these wonderful cards. Imagine the terrific display you'll have with all 36. So hurry. Be the first in your gang to get your Roy Rogers King of the Cowboys pop-out trading cards. Get a good supply of your favorite post cereals tomorrow and start collecting and swapping your Roy Rogers cards right away. Tell you, I did hear it, Roy. It was the wildest, weirdest, scariest wail I ever heard. Pat, I still think you were dreaming things, and I'm going to prove it to you. I wasn't dreaming, Roy. If, you, if you're not scared, why didn't you let Dale come with us? Well, someone has to keep an eye on the gear. If you'd done that this morning, we wouldn't be wasting our time. I can't see where I'm going, Roy. Why don't you keep the flashlight on? Why didn't you think to pack more than one flashlight? We'd better save the batteries in case we really need it. Uh-oh. 
Hey, I tripped over something, Roy. Ouch, my toe. Well, there's probably one rock on the floor of this cave, and you have to stumble over it. Roy, this ain't no rock. It's a sack or something. What? Let's see. It's right down by my foot. Shine the flash on it. It's a sack. I'll get the darn thing open. And... Hey, look, Roy. A lot of little rocks. And... Hey, they shine. Let's see one of those things. Pat, these are gold nuggets. Girl, they're tootin' right. They're what? gold nuggets, and they're mine. Now you fellas get out of here. Well, just a minute, old timer. Who are you? Yeah, where'd you come from? Never mind who I am, never mind where I come from. I bought myself a map that led me here, and you fellas are stealing my gold. We bought a map, too. At least a friend of ours did. And if this really is gold, it belongs to her. It don't belong to nobody but me. Don't worry about us, old timer. If you fell for that map deal, too... I think our friend would be happy to split the gold with you. I'm not sharing my gold with anybody. Now get, I tell you. Get, get, get. Well, sorry, but there's something I want to find out about this cave. Pat here claims he heard a wailing noise, and I'm sort of interested. Why, that stuff about the wailing gold mine is a lot of nonsensical hullabaloo. It is not. Well, you may not have heard it, but I did. I've heard all I want to hear from you fellas. Are you going to get her, or am I going to have to get help? Well, I guess you're going to have to get help, because if this is the whale and gold mine, I aim to find out what makes it whale. Yeah, you bet me too. All right, but don't say I didn't warn you. And mind you, you leave my gold alone. <laughs> well, don't worry about the gold, old-timer. It'll be here when you get back. It better be. Well, what do you think of that, Roy? The old fella probably bought a map, too, and just happened to stumble on this cave like we did. Those nuggets. Do you think they're the ones that confidence man planted here years ago? Mm, could be. The sack was pretty old. Now, uh, were you this deep in the cave when you heard the wail? I don't think so. <laughs> it scared me so. Or, I mean, it surprised me so that I don't rightly remember. Well, come on, then. Let's look in a little farther. <laughs> Don't you remember me? What? Why, Mr. Norman, what are you doing out here? Tell that dog to give me a chance and I'll tell you. Quiet, Bullet. This is an old friend of mine. Oh, I'm so goddamn glad I found you, little lady. You know, I shouldn't have sold you that map. You shouldn't have sold it to me. No, ma'am, I shouldn't. Because this here Boulder Canyon is the most dangerous earthquake country there is. Why, these big rocks go bouncing around here like marble sometimes, and if anything happened to you, my conscience would just hurt me something terrible. Earthquakes? Here? Why, sure. I got to thinking, ma'am, and I says to myself, Nugget Norman, I says, you can't let that pretty little filly risk her life for a little measly old gold. But we think we found the mine. One of my friends claims he heard a wailing noise right inside this cave. Hey, look out, little lady, look out, quick! Oh, I just grabbed you in the nick of time. Bullet, are you all right? Look out, look out, there comes another one. Oh, now, you see what you're up against? Gosh, I'm afraid I do. I'll tell you what, young lady, you better get in that cave and find your friends and get them out of here. I'll be waiting for you and I'll give you back the money you paid me for the map. Yeah, I guess I'd better. Yeah, you better. This particular earthquake may last a few minutes yet, and you'll be safe in the cave. Better take your dog with you, too, so he'll be safe. But what about you? Will you be all right? Oh, sure, sure. I can take care of myself. Done it for a good many years now. Now, you run along, little lady. Run along. Was he a little old man with a funny, high-pitched voice? I just told you, Roy. It was the same man who sold me the map, and he came all the way to Boulder Canyon to save my life. Well, I'm not so sure of that. Pat, it's got to be the same fellow we met here a while ago. Yeah, must be. Come on, we're getting out of here fast. Come on, Bullet. Yeah, now you're talking, Roy. But, Roy, he saved me from the rocks that fell in the earthquake, and, and besides, Bullet liked him. Dale, this isn't earthquake country, and I thought he was a harmless old duffer, too. But you can't always tell by the first impressions. No, I don't know about that, Roy. I like Nellie Bell the minute I laid eyes on that beautiful little motor. You just forget about Nellie Bell and let's get out of this cave. It isn't far now. Look, there's the light from the mound. Oh, Roy, 
I can't see it now. Oh, what happened? Well, there's a rock across the opening of the cave. Come on, everyone. Hey, you mean one of them great big boulders fell and shut us in here? It looks like we're shut in here, all right. I'm not so sure the boulder just fell. All right, Pat. Let's get our shoulders against this thing and see if we can move it. I'm with you, Roy. Can't even budge it. The thing not only weighs a ton, but it feels like it's wedged in. Yeah, it won't even jiggle. Maybe old Mr. Norman's still out there. He'll get help for us. Oh, Mr. Norman! The little feller we saw sure couldn't have rolled this rock up here. Hardly. Mr. Norman! Uh, there, Roy. Did you hear that? N now do you still think I was dreaming? Roy, we're shot in the whaling gold mine. Dale, Pat, Bullet, come on, follow me. We're going to find out what's behind all this whaling business. Quiet, Bullet. Quiet, fella. Oh, Roy. We seem to be right on top of it. I'm scared. You know, Roy, I am too. Well, I was, but I'm not now. Look. Hey, there's a little hole atop the cave and the light's coming through it. That's right. Now look again. Can you see a cord leading down? Why, yes. I see it. Now, I'll turn on the flashlight and... Hey, what's that on the end of the string? Well, I'll be a busted cylinder hit. It's a saw. A That's saw? Right. It sure is. A musical saw. That's the whale in the whaling gold mine. Oh, Roy, gee, I feel better now. And someone sets it vibrating and drops it down. And the echoes of this big cave, well, that's all there is to it. Then somebody's got to be up there playing that darn saw. Right. And I'm getting an idea who it is. You're getting an idea who it is, eh? Well, aren't you smart? You came to see what you could see and you saw a saw. <laughs> Why, Nugget Norman... Maybe you think this is a joke, but I don't. Well, you don't, hey? Well, I do. <laughs> I told you two fellas that you'd be sorry if you stole my gold. We haven't touched your gold. Now, how did you get the boulder across the mouth of this cave? I told you I'd get help. Well, get some help and get us out of here. Well, I don't know. I trust the little lady, but I don't trust you two, Jaspers. So I'll deal with the little lady. How about it, ma'am? Want me to let you out? Oh, of course we do. All right. All of you tie your guns on the string, and I'll pull them up with my saw. Are we going to do it, Roy? Well, we haven't got much choice right now. All of them now, no monkey business. All right. All the guns are tied on. Yeah, that's a ticket. Now up goes the string. <laughs> well, little lady, I guess when I come into your restaurant, you never heard of Corky Lewis's whaling gold mine, had you? Look, let's save the talk till later. Yeah, that's what I say. You got our guns and you can have the gold and that ought to just about close the subject. Please, Mr. Norman. You promised you'd get the boulder moved. Yeah, I did it that. And I'm not one to go back on a promise to a lady. Only my name ain't Nugget Norman. You folks have had the honor of being outsmarted by the smartest fella in the West. I'm Corky Lewis. <laughs> How about them? How about them? How about those grape nuts flakes? How about those grape nuts flakes? How about them? How about them? How about those grape nuts flakes? They are so good, good for you too. The two minute energy works for you. So how about them? How about them? How about grape nuts flakes? Yep. How about those grape nuts flakes? Take an old hands advice, partners. Tomorrow when you roll out of your bunk, corral a bowl full of that great energy given cereal, grape nuts flakes. Grape Nuts Flakes are called the great two-minute energy cereal because two minutes after you polish off a bowlful, their powerhouse whole wheat energy starts to go to work for you. That's the kind of quick energy you fellers and gals need. You'll go for Grape Nuts Flakes sugar-roasted flavor. It's delicious. So ask Mom to get you Grape Nuts Flakes, the two-minute energy cereal. Look for Roy's picture on the front of the package. <laughs> Dale, Roy, and Pat, trapped in the Halloween gold mine by an immovable boulder, find that the mysterious wailing is nothing more frightening than a musical saw. They find, too, that their captor, the old rascal who sold Dale the map, is none other than Corky Lewis, 
famous confidence man of earlier Western days. All right, Louie, roll it away. Who's he talking to? Well, he said he had help, but he's got to have more than one man to work like that. Well, Corky wasn't so tough to handle after all. Oh, of course he wasn't. I told you he was a nice old man. He just must have gotten off on the wrong foot somehow. I'll believe that when we're back in Paradise Valley. Well, he's letting us out anyway. Let's just say I'm showing you the daylight, sort of temporary-like. Now, don't none of you move unless you want to dance a jig to the tune of the lead from your own shooting irons. Come along, Louie. Roy, look. Hey, that's three men. That's three men, all packed into one frame. There they are, Louie. The only people who ever found the gold I hid here 50 years ago. You want me to take care of them, eh, Mr. Corky? Yeah, not just yet, Louie, not just yet. Huh. Now, young lady, I've been giving your case a lot of thought. Well, put those guns down, little man. They're dangerous. <laughs> you bet they are to you. Well, now, I'll tell you. I've been making myself a real nice little living ever since I got out of prison. The way I've been doing it is I've been selling maps. The maps never lead any place, but somehow you folks got lucky and found the place I keep my gold. That's your gold, huh? You bet it is. I put it here 50 years ago, and it's paid me big interest ever since. I'd be glad to let the little lady go home, and I wouldn't even care to cause you fellas any harm. Only trouble is, you're on to my racket, and I'm too old to look for another job. Well, I'm just going to have Louie roll a boulder back and leave you here while I go on selling maps. Say, Carkey, if you're going to keep on using that whaling saw, you ought to find a way to play it so you wouldn't have to pull it up and down. Want me to show you something? What do you mean? You a musician? Sure, sort of. Hmm, all right. What do I do? Uh, give me a piece of cord. Give me a piece of cord, Louie. And remember, Rogers, your own guns are looking right at you every minute. Sure, sure, I know. Here's the rope. Don't try no funny business. Yeah, go ahead, Rogers. Show me what you're going to show me. All right. You have the rope tied to one end of the saw, so it just dangled down. Yeah. Now, if you'd tie the cord on each end, the way I'm holding it, why, then you could take it and snatch two guns right out of a man's hand. Oh, hey, oh my wrist. Louie, get him. Get all of them. Pat, grab those guns and grab Corky. Oh. Roy, look out. You snap guns away from Mr. Corky. I snap every bone in your body. Oh, oh boy. I know how to fight a big lug like you, Louie. <laughs> it doesn't feel so good in the stomach, does it? You dodge like mosquito. You hit like mule. You're getting him, Roy. He's dropping his arms. You bet, and we'll see what his jaw can take, too. Oh, Roy, you knocked him out. You knocked that big bruiser out. I was pretty lucky. Because if he had just been a little taller, I'd never could have reached his glass jaw. Rogers, I need a man like you on my staff. Why don't we forget this whole thing and talk business? I'm not listening to you, Corky. Nobody will listen to you again, except maybe your fellow inmates in prison. Now, Pat, we've got to figure out a way to get these fellows back to town. Well, Nellie Bell's a mighty sturdy old gal. Let's go. Now, wait a minute. Aren't you forgetting a certain bag of nuggets that belongs to me? I told you this trip wouldn't be a wild goose chase, and we all got what we came after. We all got what we came after? What do you mean? Well, you insisted on tracking down the man who sold me the map. And you did it. Huh? And Pat said he couldn't wait to find a gold mine that whales, and he found one. Huh? And I had a very special reason for wanting to get hold of a couple of thousand dollars. Thanksgiving is less than a month away, and I'm going to see that every poor family within 50 miles of Mineral City has the biggest turkey dinner they ever had. Pat, I don't know about women. I'll declare I just don't know about them. That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you Until we meet again mm -hmm.
The Roy Rogers Show was brought to you tonight by Post Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal. Grape Nuts Flakes is the cereal Roy likes best for strength and energy. Look for the picture of Roy and Trigger on the front of the package. The Roy Rogers Show can be heard again next week at this same time with Pat Brady, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Brush production written and directed by Fran Van Hardisfeld with music by Milton Charles. Handy, dandy, and candy. The three little honey bears you see on the front of every Sugar Crisp package want me to remind you. This is National Honey Week. Yes, and a good way to celebrate is to discover that delicious sugar and honey-coated treat, Sugar Crisp. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy right out of the package. It's a honey of a treat any way you eat it. This week, National Honey Week, try Post Sugar Crisp. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Cliff Arquette, and Ben Weldon. This is Art Ballinger speaking for Post Grape Nuts Flakes. Stay tuned in for the latest news brought to you by Log Cabin Syrup.